So for my last video here, I'm going to go ahead and do a kind of extended example here using Excel, illustrating the relationship between the production function and the various cost functions and calculating all of this. So I'm going ahead and thinking about a situation where I'm going to explicitly link the amount that I can produce, the quantity of output or total product, to the number of workers I employ. So the workers I employ are my variable input. And I'm also linking the number of workers I employ to my variable cost. So I'm going to pay my workers $10 each. Um, and I guess I'm sort of located in some very low wage um, location. Maybe these are all hourly figures and that's not so bad. So if I produce zero units of output, and I don't hire any workers, then my variable costs are zero. But I still have my fixed costs, which are 100 in this example. And I've said that I want to go ahead and make my total costs equal to my fixed costs plus my variable costs. And then if I hire one worker, my variable costs or total variable costs increase to 10 going to go ahead and make my total costs equal to my fixed costs plus my variable costs and so on down the line. And I'm going to use control here so that I can click on multiple cells and copy that formula and not disrupt everything here. Notice that what I've done here is I've concentrated uh, on trying to make sure that we understand that the marginal cost here is what happens in the interval between 0 and 16. So once we go to a situation where we're not just adjusting quantity one unit at a time, we're going to have to use that idea that marginal cost is going to be the change in total cost over the change in quantity. But before we get there, let's just go ahead and think about how to compute average total cost. So average total cost is going to be total costs divided by our total production. And here we're trying to, do, trying to divide by zero, so that's not going to go well. Once we go down here, again, we're going to do total costs divided by total production and get something a little more reasonable. And I'm going to go ahead and copy this formula down into these other cells here. So we can see that my total costs here do have this U-shape. They decline rapidly at first, then they reach a minimum here in this region of 120 units, and then they start climbing again. And that's because average variable costs are going to have a similar shape. So average variable costs are variable costs divided by the number of units of output and let me just say, for both of these types of average cost, it's common for people to want to divide by the number of units of input, but really it's the number of units per output. We're averaging over the units of output. So again, dividing by zero, that didn't make Excel very happy. Average variable cost when we produce 16 units is the variable costs associated with producing 16 units divided by 16 units. And again, average variable costs when we produce 36 units are the total variable costs when we produce 36 units divided by the fact that we had 36 units. Okay, so now we're going to take this and we're going to copy it to all these empty cells here. And we can see that average variable costs, again, starts relatively high and we're going to go ahead and see that it dips down here and then starts climbing again. And that's because if we went and looked here, notice that the marginal productivity of the first worker took us from 0 to 16. So that marginal productivity for the first worker was 20 units. The second worker took us from 16 to 36. So that worker had a marginal productivity of 20 units. The next worker, worker number three, 
took us from 36 to 60. So that worker had a marginal productivity of 24. So in this example, I've built in increasing marginal productivity for a while. Fourth worker, on the other hand, we're down to a marginal productivity of 16 again. And then fifth worker took us from 76 to 90, so that's 14 units. So the first several workers had increasing marginal productivity, and then later on we had decreasing marginal productivity. Remember that that should imply that our marginal costs are decreasing when we have increasing marginal productivity, and then when we run into decreasing marginal productivity, we're going to have increasing marginal cost. So let's go ahead and see whether or not that's true. The formula for marginal cost is a little bit tricky here. So remember it's going to be the change in total, total costs over the change in quantity. So the change in total costs here is going to be 110 minus 100 then we're going to divide by the change in quantity, 16 minus 0. And close the parentheses to keep Excel happy. And so the marginal cost per unit is 63 cents. I'll do it again here. The marginal cost between 16 and 36 is the cost of producing, the total cost of producing 36 minus the total cost of producing 16 divided by 36 minus 16 because that's our change in quantity. And one more time, what is the marginal cost between 36 and 60? Well, we go ahead and look at the total cost of producing 60, subtract off the total cost of producing 36, divide by 60, our new quantity, our Q2, minus our old quantity, Q1, and we get a marginal cost of 42. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that down here to these later cells. And there we go. So we can see again we had increasing marginal productivity on workers 1 through 3, and we had decreasing marginal costs up till we get to the third worker. After that, we have decreasing marginal productivity, and we're getting increasing marginal cost. So, a few analytical questions here. What's our break-even price? Well, remember the break-even price is the minimum value of average total cost. And it looks to me like the lowest that we can get average total cost is a buck fifty. So my answer here would be one dollar and fifty cents. One dollar and fifty cents if I could type. There we go. What's our shutdown price? Remember that the shutdown price is the lowest value of average variable cost. So it looks like our shutdown price to me is 50 cents. So that's the lowest we can get our direct cost of production. So if we can sell our output for 80 cents, what level of output maximizes our profits? Well, remember, we want to produce all units of output that have marginal cost less than our price. So units 0 through 16 cost us 63 cents marginal cost on average? Yes, we want to produce those. Units 16 through 36 cost us 50 cents on average? Yes, we want to produce those, and so on and so forth. We definitely want to produce up to 90, because units 76 through 90 cost us 71 cents on average. We make a profit on those, but we don't want to produce above 90, because those cost us more than 80 cents on average. So we want to produce 90 units here. What is our profit or loss? We could do this two different ways. One is we could go ahead and calculate price minus average total cost times quantity. So if we did it that way, price 
is 80 cents minus average total cost. Average total cost here, uh-oh, is $1.67. So on average, we're taking an 87 cent loss on this and we're producing 90 units. So I'm going to make this a negative 0.87 times 90. So we're taking a $78 loss. Just to double check, we can also calculate directly as revenue is price times quantity. So we're getting 80 cents and we're selling 90 units minus total costs. And total cost of producing 90 units is 150. So we got the same answer here. So that's good. I'm glad that we got the same answer. Either way we did it, that means we probably got it right. Would we be better off producing zero? Well, if we produced zero, what would our profit or loss be? If we produce zero, we get zero revenue because we don't sell anything. But we still have $100 worth of fixed costs. So if we produce zero, our losses would be 100 So would we be better off producing zero? No, because losing $78 is better than losing $100. Not a whole lot better, but there it is. Let me do this second example over here. If we can sell our output for $1.30, what level of output maximizes our profits? Well, we want to keep on producing as long as marginal cost is less than $1.30. So in this case, we want to produce all the way up to 120 units because the marginal cost is lower than $1.30. We don't want to produce above 120 units because the marginal, the marginal cost of $1.67 is above a buck thirty. So we want to go ahead and produce 120 units. What's our profit or loss? Well, we could go and do it as price minus average total cost. So price minus average total cost. We now have reduced our loss per unit from the horrible 87 cents of loss per unit down to a dollar 30 minus a dollar 50 so we have negative 20 cents of profit per unit we lose 20 cents per unit so we could look at this as negative 20 cents per unit times 120 units so we've lost 24 dollars just to double check we can also compute this directly. We sold 120 units at a buck 30 a piece. So that's our total revenue. And our total costs here are 180. And we get, again, same answer with either way of calculating our profits. And that's a good check to see that we've done it right. Would we be better off producing zero? Well, if we produce 120 units and sell them for a buck 30 each, we suffer losses of 24. And that's a lot better than suffering losses of 100 when we produce zero. So again, the answer is no. And notice, you know, not surprisingly, in both of these cases I did so far, when the price is less than our break-even price, we make a loss. But because the price is above our shutdown price, we're not better off producing zero. All right, last case here. Let's go ahead and at least I think this is the last thing, yeah. This is the last thing I programmed in here. So if we can sell our output for $2.20, how many units should we produce? Well, it now becomes worth it to produce up to 126 units, though not all the way up to 130. So all the units 1 through 126 are profitable, so we want to produce 126. What's our profit or loss? Well, we are selling things for $2.20, and I think our average total cost here, yes, our average total cost is buck fifty. So let's compute our profit per unit. We could go, our profit per unit is $2.20, minus $1.51, and we're going to sell 126 units. So we get $86.94 of profit. Just to double check here, 
let's go ahead and say, well, we're going to sell stuff. We're going to sell 126 units for $2.20 each. So that's our total revenue. But we need to subtract off our total costs. And I believe our total costs here are 200. I must have made a mistake here. Oh, total costs here are $190, not $200. So that was my mistake. Okay, so let's go and check that. And it looks very slightly different here. 126. Instead of taking that 151 from there, because that might be rounded, I'm going to take it directly from here and see if that gets us better. Yeah, so that 151 that was right here is rounded, and if I take the number directly from the cell, instead of copying it with my eyes, then I don't have that rounding problem, and I do get the same answer here. So that's reassuring. Math still works. Um, and we're very comfortable with that. Okay, so that's how you might set up this sort of thing in an Excel problem.